Hi besties, if you have no idea how to build your perfect fragrance wardrobe, I got you. I know a lot of you guys get a little confused with fragrances, but I need you to understand that fragrance wardrobe is exactly what it sounds like. It is literally a collection of fragrances that are perfect for different occasions, different seasons, and different time of the day. Just like when we think of capsule wardrobe, right? You want every piece of clothing to make sense, to fit the occasion, fit the season, and make you feel good about yourself. You wanna set the vibe, the mood, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna name the six categories that you need to create the perfect fragrance wardrobe. In each category, I'm gonna mention three fragrances to give you guys some examples. Okay, now a little disclaimer, because I feel like it needs to be said. I am not a fragrance collector by any means. I do not support the idea of collecting fragrances just to collect. I am a perfume lover. I love and appreciate fragrances with my heart and soul. And I think that you absolutely do not need to have 200, 300 fragrances to build the perfect fragrance wardrobe. I would say you need about 10 fragrances to get you covered for all types of occasions, seasons, and all that stuff. I don't think you need to invest money only in niche fragrances or only designer fragrances. There are plenty of options. Like there are celebrity fragrances, there's you know online discounters, there's drugstores. You can also work with what you already have and I would highly encourage you to do so. Revisit scents that you already have Spend some time with them. Think about what you like. Maybe a fragrance that you loved two years ago doesn't appeal to you anymore. Our nose changes, our body chemistry changes. Just spend some time with fragrances that you already have and decide what you wanna do. Once you reduce or downsize your collection, perhaps to zero, set a budget. You know, maybe you wanna spend $100 on a fragrance every month. Maybe you wanna spend a certain amount of money, you know, once a month, twice a month, once half a year, like do whatever works for you and your budget. We're all different, we all have different price point, different taste, you do you, I do me and that's okay. We do not judge or hate over here. I just want you to know that, okay? Great, I'm so glad I got this out of the way and now let's just jump right into the video. First category, your everyday slash signature scent. You definitely need one, honey. It needs to be versatile, but not boring. It has to be meaningful to you, special to you. It has to define you. And it has to go well with every single outfit, mood, makeup, vibe, and stuff like that. I know it's not easy because for some people it takes years and years to find their signature scent, but it's more of an experience, adventure, journey. You'll get there eventually. I'm just saying it's not easy, but you will get there. You definitely need a timeless classic. I cannot stress this enough. It's like not having a white crisp shirt and a pair of jeans in your closet. You can call me boring, you can call me whatever you want. But I'm just saying, that's just what I think you need. The first one I'm gonna start with is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. She's popular, she's very popular, and I don't even think I have to talk too much about her. But let me say something. I think every single woman or a man should at least try to play around with Chanel fragrances. I'm not telling you to get it. I'm just telling you to at least try because you have different tastes. That's okay. I'm just saying you should try to play around with her. If you don't like that sharpness of patchouli because on my skin, it is a beast mode. It lasts and lasts and lasts and the patchouli here is really amped up. But if you want that patchouli to be a little bit toned down and you want your vanilla to be more prominent, just go for the intense version. I know it sounds contradictory, intense should be more intense, but in this case, the intense version is just more amped up on that vanilla note. It's more smooth. This one is sharp. It's fresh. It has that burst of, you know, bergamot in the opening, and then it kind of settles down to that woody, beautiful, elegant patchouli. That's my number one recommendation when it comes to timeless classics. And number two would be something in a slightly different category, but something that still has that Chanel DNA, and that is the infamous Chanel number no. five. It's a very polarizing one, I know. You either love it or you hate it. But you know what? Every time 
I wear it, I get compliments. Can you guys explain this to me? Because I have no idea. I know it has that vintagey vibe, but to me, it doesn't really smell like an old woman, how people describe. To me, it smells like old money. To me, it smells like a woman that doesn't give a flying about what people say. It is just iconic. It's just iconic, classy for a reason. A chain of white pearls and timeless black dress. This is, this is what it smells like to me. Okay, now I gotta calm down because this scent got me in a chokehold unlike any other and my obsession for it is real, you guys. And I know this video is not about me. It's all about you, it's all for you. I just gotta shut up and collect my thoughts because this scent is just incredible and simple at the same time. And we're talking about the Effortlessly Beautiful Gypsy Water by the House of Byredo. I know it's popular, it's everywhere, but it's worth the hype. I love it. It's so dainty and it smells natural, chic effortlessly beautiful, it's perfectly unisex, it's very inoffensive, very likable. I honestly cannot imagine anyone disliking the scent. It's so smooth, like the sandalwood here with the incense and vanilla just remind me of this like fluffy soil that you see in the forest. Like you walk into the forest, there is this beautiful breeze, burst of fresh air that hits your tired face and you're just, you just feel like you're in the fairy land. Like this smells like a fairy dust to me. It's so dainty and so airy and smooth and creamy at the same time. And that burst of freshness, that's not necessarily coming from the bergamot, but that pine needles and juniper berries. Oh my God, it's just amazing. Like honestly, it's so effortlessly beautiful. Like when you wear this, you're not gonna be like, try hard wannabe kind of girl. You're like, I know I'm cool. I already know I am. You can't kill my vibe. It's beautiful. It's so, so chic and timeless. It's very natural smelling. And I feel like this is one of those fragrances that are gonna be in for like years and years and years to come. It's very, very timeless to me. Lastly, but certainly not least, guys, is the scent that's so polarizing, but yet so popular. But honestly, teenagers, kids, women, boys, girls, rabbits, hamsters, everybody, everybody owns it. Everybody wears it, but I don't care because I love it. I really don't care. And it is Santal 33 Honey. Who said you can rock it as a signature scent? If you wanna rock, whatever you wanna rock, do it. To me, this is a cool chick or cool guy type of fragrance. Like, I don't get any freaky things that I hear people talk about. I don't get any of that. I get only what's the best. It's dry and hot and spicy and heavy and just amazing on my skin. I don't get any, like I said, I don't get any of that freaky pickle juice or anything like that. To me, it just smells so freaking cool. I just feel so cool when I wear it. It has papyrus, it has cardamom, it has iris, it has cedar, leather, amber, sandalwood. Everything in here is so dry, but so cool. I freaking love this scent, Santo 33. Listen to nobody, guys. Listen to nobody and rock this scent. My second category for the perfect fragrance wardrobe is your work scent. You need something that's gonna give you confidence at what you're doing. You have to smell professional, approachable, likable, inviting. And to me, the perfect fragrance for that is Naxos from Zerzhev. I know this is considered to be more masculine scent, maybe because of that prominent note of lavender in the opening. There's also a note of honey. It's interesting because I'm not a big fan of the honey note in fragrances. I don't even think I like lavender, to be honest. But here, everything is blended to perfection. You're not really able to pick out separate notes within the composition. Everything is just very smooth and blended to perfection. It smells very luxurious, expensive professional and for some reason when I close my eyes I see the most luxurious hotel in Monaco filled with billionaires owning yachts and drinking champagne for breakfast that's just the vibe I'm getting from Naxos if that's your vibe too then go for Naxos it's really a beautiful very professional smelling fragrance 
Next up, I have something for those of you who work in a medical field, you're not really allowed to wear fragrances that project too well. The fragrance that I think is really nice and perfect skin scent is Pure Musk from Narciso Rodriguez. It's a very calming, relaxing, soothing, cocooning scent that puts you in a good mood. And I highly recommend the scent to people that suffer from migraines, headaches, because it really is relaxing, not overbearing, overwhelming, it's not too loud. Like I said, it's a skin scent that's also perfect for, for layering. So if let's say you go out somewhere after work and you don't want your fragrance to interfere with the fragrance you choose to wear later in the day, this is a perfect choice because it's just gonna make any, pretty much any fragrance smell more musky and more like creamy and cocooning rather than alter the whole vibe of a fragrance. It's really a beautiful, beautiful scent. Very clean, musky, obviously. There's a lot of musk, a lot of like soft florals. There's cashmere in to give you that soft and blanket-like quality to it. It's very fluffy and cloud-like. I really, really like this one. So Pure Musk by Narciso Rodriguez, that was another option. And then finally we have Florida Poe from Diptyque. I have the small 10 ml bottle, but I think it's a perfect scent if you like powdery, soft, sexy scents. It's not entirely a skin scent. It projects quite a bit on my skin, surprisingly and it lasts for a long, long time, but it has that very likable, appealing, powdery vibe. Imagine the vintage powder puffs that you know you, you use to apply makeup on your face. That's the overall vibe that I get. It's a very feminine scent, which is considered to be unisex, but I think it's more femi feminine leaning. Beautiful, there's umbre, there's musk, there's some florals, there's iris. That's where the powderiness is coming from very very beautiful and like pretty pretty lady type of fragrance we're moving into spring and summer so we need fragrances that are fresh uplifting zesty aquatic effervescent because that's when they shine the most they don't necessarily have to be light but they should contrast with high temperatures so you do want to avoid ambery heavy spicy heavy hitters because they're not going to contrast with high temperatures, they're gonna make you feel sick, they're gonna really annoy you, they're not gonna perform the way they should, and ultimately, you're gonna end up hating them. So I have three wonderful options for you, and the first one is my love, my forever, ever love, Delina by Parfums de Marly. If you want your spring and summer fragrance to exude femininity, be unique look no further she is not a typical girl she is not your typical feminine fragrance that is so saturated that you literally smell everywhere no this smells very niche very grown very unique it opens up with the zesty almost sour tart note of rhubarb and lychee and then it dries down to this floral woody incensey goddess she is absolutely gorgeous she is giving me the vibe of marie antoinette i don't know maybe because of the bottle maybe that's why i'm biased but she is such a happy scent like genuinely when you wear hair you're gonna love life like honestly when i wear her nothing and nobody can kill my vibe. I am genuinely happy with my life. I have a smile on my face. Like she puts such a smile on my face every single time. I love her so, so much. If you suffer from summertime sadness, Delina will fix you. I'm just saying. Guys, I have a confession. I have a big problem with fresh fragrances because they never last they lack depth and character and i'm bored out of my mind like i'm never over the moon to wear a fresh fragrance unless it's this one aqua universalis forte from maison francis kerjan this is such a crisp luxurious smelling fresh fragrance that i'm honestly floored it's so uber long lasting guys 
you better trust me on this. When you spray it on your skin, you're gonna smell it for hours and hours and hours. And if you do spray it on your clothes, this is gonna hold them tight and never ever let them go. I'm just saying, it's super versatile, it's super crisp, unisex by the way, so anybody can rock it. And even though it smells very luxurious, it's not really over the top. It doesn't smell like too much, like you're trying too hard. Because of that citrusy opening, very natural smelling by the way, there's lemon and bergamot at the top, I believe. That smells very, very natural. Like you're not gonna get any bathroom cleaner vibe, none of that. It smells very, very natural. And then you're gonna get a little bit of woodsy notes, a little bit of, a little bit of florals, a little bit of musk. So you get pretty much, you know, best of both worlds for the summertime, really. It's such a safe yet interesting composition, if that makes sense. Like it's super uber wearable. It's very clean smelling, but it doesn't give you any like laundry detergent vibe, to be honest with you. It just smells very high end to me. Very versatile, easy to wear. You can wear pretty much with any outfit, any makeup, any occasion. Such a great summer or spring and summer es essential. Very, very nice fragrance. Now we have a show-stopping fragrance for spring and summer. Like Delina and Aqua Universalis Forte, you know, like I said, this one is more like casual, but you can dress it up, dress it down very easily, very versatile. This is more like feminine, like, l like when I close my eyes, I see light colors, I see white, I see like powdery, very airy outfits, very like flowy dresses and stuff like that. This, however, a Chento Overdose from Zerzhov. This is a diva in the bottle. If you want to make a statement, this is the way to go. But you have to be in your mood for white florals because it is a very strong floral scent. Very strong. It's honestly one of the most powerful, one of the best, the strongest floral fragrances I've ever put my nose on. So what you're gonna get here is a blast of green jasmine. But then when you go past that stage, you're gonna get the slightly soapy, powdery sweetness underneath. But it's still a jasmine scent. It has green notes, it has aldehydes, it has some fruity notes. I'm very, very particular with fruits and florals. Like to me, they cannot be overbearing, they cannot be too much. Even though here you have a blast of jasmine, it's a very sparkling experience. You get this zesty, clean, uplifting, wide floral experience. So I wore this during an event here in Singapore. It was a fragrance event. And I got so many compliments from people in the industry, complete strangers, by the way. They were complimenting me like crazy on this fragrance. I'm telling you guys, it's a show stopper. But like I said, you have to be into your white florals. But honestly, the wearing experience and the heat and humidity, it's amazing. This shines in the heat. Now, fall and winter fragrances. You need something purring, something okay? Something with the oomph, with the spice, okay? You need something that's gonna cut through the cold, that's gonna wrap you around like a blanket, make you feel cozy and warm. It's been quite a challenge for me to pick only three within this category because the majority of my fragrances are fall slash winter appropriate. But I was trying, I was really trying. Um, I live in Singapore where it's hot as balls and unfortunately I cannot wear any of these fragrances. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about them. I'm gonna start off with, with the queen. The queen that's just bathing in gold just like that casually because she knows she knows she's the queen of vanillas guys if you love your vanillas to be something more than just a playful sugary sweet sticky syrupy vanilla lune feline from atelier des Arts. this fragrance is just magical to me it smells so 
rich and deep and dark and resinous and spicy and in incredibly smoky. This is a very smoky vanilla, very carnal, very sensual, very kinky almost. It's very grown. It's not gonna be your flirty type of vanilla. This is for grown women. Absolutely incredible, guys. In the opening, you get this blast of fresh and green cardamom. And then you get this rich and warm and resinous vanilla, but it's not a vanilla powder or a vanilla extract. It's vanilla paste. I get the vanilla paste experience. You know when you take the vanilla bean and then you scrub it and you take out the, the essence of it inside, you know, you get the vanilla paste inside. That's the whole experience I get. And I have that with a lot of smoke and woods and it's a little animalic too on my skin, but not too much, not to a point where it smells dirty or skunky or anything like that. It's a very sensual and carnal experience. I absolutely love it. It works incredibly in the colder months. I absolutely love this. And I don't like to talk about things like that, but when I take a cap off and I take a whiff of it, I can smell the price tag. Like, it smells so incredibly luxurious. Okay, the next fragrance is everything you could ever want from a fall and winter fragrance. To be honest with you, it's very unique, it's refined, and it's such a beast and projection. It will never ever let you go. Like that's how strong it is. You will be so intoxicated once you try it. You're never gonna wanna stop because it radiates pure mystery. People are gonna want to know you. They may not talk about you, but they will ask about your name for sure. There's saffron, which has this leathery sweetness lavender and nutmeg to give a little spice and the cleanest oud I have ever experienced highlighted by patchouli and musk it's super opulent it's like the smoothest mist of woody sweetness that wears like a dream in colder months it's just incredible this scent is worth every single penny okay another one that's bomb.com is Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford. It's a unisex fragrance and it smells so delicious, rich, and opulent. When I smell this, it reminds me of holiday season immediately because it has that almost Christmassy vibe because I smell a lot of cinnamon, cloves, like dried fruits, perhaps some raisins, like dried cherries maybe or plums, something like that. And that complemented by the mouth-watering and very juicy tobacco and vanilla is just so rich. And it just makes me feel good. Like this fragrance makes me feel so good and like edgy and rich. I really love wearing Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're moving into date night. So we need a scent that's going to make you feel like you're the vibe. Like you're setting the mood. You need something with the oom, with, with the roar, with, ooh, okay, what you gonna do? That's the vibe we're going for, okay? I hope you get it. So the first fragrance is Thoroughly Gorgeous. It's a unisex fragrance, and this is exciting type of a fragrance, okay? It's not loud or in your face. This is Ombre Noe, guys. This is one of those fragrances that will not make you come off desperate for attention because we don't want that girl. No, no. We're not desperate for anything over here, okay? We are not. So I'm just saying, this is not a loud in your face fragrance. This is like, hey, you wanna get to know me? You gotta come closer to me, okay? But if you do wanna come closer to me, you gotta work hard, okay? That's the vibe. So what you're gonna get here is this soft, and spicy opening but then that's where the magic happens then it dries down to this rich woody and dark ambery scent you see where this is going it started off innocent soft a little spicy but you don't know when this is going you have no idea you might get there but you may not 
It is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, next up we have Rouge Malakit from Armani Privé. Every time I smell this, I just roll my eyes to the back of my head. If you want your date night fragrance to be on the more feminine side, I'm not saying like feminine and that's all. No, feminine sexy, but still feminine. You get the point? I hope you do. What you're gonna get here is this creamy, smooth, sensual, and very sexy tuberose scent. This is a tuberose bomb because we have a tuberose in the opening, in the middle, and when it dries down. So all the way, okay? But there's something more than just tuberose, okay? There's jasmine, there's pink pepper at the top. There is this amber. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so creamy, ambery, sensual. This is the tuberose of your dreams. This is not your mature, old lady-like tuberose scent. No, this is extremely creamy, sensual, and very sexy, but still feminine. Still feminine. If you love feminine sexy scents, Rouge Malakit from Armani Privé. 10 out of 10, I love it. I had to include the infamous Bakker Rouge 540. At least it's not the EDP version. This is the Extrait de Parfum. I already know Again, so played out, overhyped, overrated. It's everywhere, it makes me sick. I can't deal with it anymore. Yeah, you can. Because you don't smell it everywhere, honey. You don't. I don't. I live in Singapore where people are so rich that they buy a bunch of grapes for $100. And I don't smell it everywhere. You know what I smell? Dupes of it. Dupes of Baccarat Rouge 540. That's what I smell everywhere. I don't smell this, okay? But I love the scent so much. And I do think it's not overhyped, it's not overrated, it's not played out. I must say though, I definitely do prefer the x version over the EDP because the EDP to me, it's a little bit too sweet and it doesn't have that much of a woody base. Like this to me is way more thick and creamy and woody. I don't get that much of sweetness. There is a big dosage of sweetness here, but I'm not saying that it's as prominent as in the EDP version. It's absolutely amazing. And if I want to smell a little bit more unique, I always layer it with different fragrances and it works like a dream. So that was Bakker Rouge 540, the extreme version. Finally, the last category for your perfect fragrance wardrobe is your formal slash special occasion. And every day is a special occasion if you look at it like that, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about weddings, engagement parties, birthday parties, birthday dinners, graduations, opera concerts, the list can go on. So you need something that's gonna make you shine a little bit more. I'm sure you already do, but in case you wanna put your fragrance to a whole different level and add that elevated facet, I got you, boo. So I'm gonna start off with the fragrance that's so extra and that is Ruby and Vanilla Neroli by the House of EBK. Guys, this opens up with this fizzy and sparkling fruitiness with the hint of orange bitterness. Like the bitterness that's, that comes from an orange rind. And then when it dries down, it dries, it dries down to this syrupy, fruity nectar that's a little bit overripe. Not that it smells synthetic or like artificial or sickly sweet, nothing like that. None of that, I don't get any of that. It just smells very sparkling and sweet. You know when you take a sip of champagne and there is a little strawberry on the bottom, you take a sip of it and then the fizziness goes through your nostrils all the way to the back of your head and you go like this. That's the experience I get. It's a very champagne-like experience. I love it. It's very unique and I'm actually mind blown that I love it so much because this fragrance has two notes that I freaking hate and that is Neroli and Orange Blossom. Can you guys believe that? It's crazy. 
but I love it. Next fragrance, guys, is spectacular. This fragrance is going to turn every special occasion into a historical event. This is not a fragrance. This is work of art. It's so incredibly mysterious, gothic, and ancient. Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall. Oh my God. This is like stepping into an empty cathedral from 13th century. It's dark, it's cool, it's dusty, yet expensive. You see an exquisite stained glass window that lets the bright and colorful light stream in, cutting through the shadows. It's so incredible. Without a doubt, a star, a star of the evening. This is Monica Bellucci and Milena to me. Everyone's gonna talk about you. Everyone's gonna talk about you. Everyone's gonna turn heads. I'm just saying, it is insane. This may not be your cup of tea, I'm not gonna lie, because it's strong and bold, very strong. However, if you are into dark, heavy, mysterious rose with a lot of spices, and let me say that again, a lot of spices, a lot of amber, and a lot of patchouli. This is gonna be the love of your life. This is a masterpiece of a human being in the bottle. I don't know if it's because it's created by Dominic Rupion, but I freaking love it. Okay, we're leaving the 13th century and we're back in 2023 with the Queen of Iris. Iris Malikan from Maison Crevalli. It's a unisex fragrance that just blew my mind. I will never forget the moment I had smelled this for the very first time. I was like, what the hell is this? I remember I smelled it and I was like, I had never smelled anything like this before. I was floored. I was like, I need to have this. And then the next day, I got a full bottle. It was love at first sniff. And the crazy thing is, based on the notes listed on Fragrantica, never. I would never ever purchase this fragrance because it has the note of galbanum, which I personally hate. I hate galbanum. It's bitter, it's dirt-like, it's not sexy, it's not, it's just not for me, okay? But then they created this scent in such a way that I don't smell galbanum. I don't smell anything that I dislike. Honestly, it has leather. It has a blast, a very creamy, thick, smooth iris, slightly powdery, but just a touch. And then when all of this kind of molds with your skin, I also get this like leathery and vanillic undertones, which I think that contrasts really beautiful with the note of galbanum. That kind of smooth, leathery vanilla with this bitterness from galbanum. It's a really unique composition. It's definitely not for everyone, but I'm just saying it's so unique. It's just so interesting. Like I can't get enough of it. I just can't. I want to smell it over and over and over again absolutely one of a kind. It's a one of a kind of fragrance. And I think that combination of leather and you know creaminess that's coming from vanilla and iris, that will galbanum, that's what making it smell very unique that makes this fragrance suitable for special occasion. I don't know, I just, I just love it. It's just one of a kind, very special, very unique out of this world. I love it. Iris Malikan from Maison Crevelli. Guys, I had so much fun filming this video for you. You have no idea. I really hope you enjoyed it. I think this is the best way for you to create the perfect fragrance wardrobe. It'll just make things a little easier for you, especially when it comes to shopping for fragrances. I will list everything in the description box below, so please make sure to check that out. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions or suggestions. I'm more than happy to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!